Welcome back to the beginner side of Live2D Beginner vs Pro. In this episode, I'll be introducing you to physics in Live2D. I'll be teaching you how to make your hair sway to simulate how our hair will move as we move our head. You may be wondering, wait, we haven't rigged the head movements yet, so why are we rigging the hair physics right now? Well, this is mostly down to preference. You can rig the head movements first, but I prefer to rig the hair physics first, as it's a bit easier to manage the deformer hierarchy. Allow me to explain what the deformer hierarchy actually is. In Live2D, we can refer to deformers as parents and children. As we create more deformers, we start forming a hierarchy. For example, if we create a new warp deformer on one of our brow deformers here, it will become the parent of our brow Y slash angle deformer like this. Child deformers will be visibly to the right of the parent deformers and connected by this dotted line. Now, it's very important to understand this hierarchy as we continue rigging our model. A child deformer will follow the parent deformer, but not the other way around. Let me show you an example. Let's take this new deformer we made here and rig it to move to the left and right, like this. You'll notice that as I was moving the deformer, it will also move the child deformer too. However, if we adjust the shape of the child deformer, it won't change the parent deformer. One last thing to bear in mind with the deformer hierarchy is making sure that child deformers are not larger than the parent. We can adjust the size of deformers by holding control and dragging the bounding box. But bear in mind, if we have keyforms already set on our deformer, then it will cause some issues. If a child deformer is larger than its parent, it can also cause weird deformations to occur, as sometimes when the art mesh ends up deforming beyond the bounds of our parent deformer, it can stretch a little more than expected. So basically, this is the reason why it can be easier to manage the deformer hierarchy by rigging our physics first. Our physics deformers will always be the child of our XYZ deformers when we rig our main movements later. So, by rigging this first, we can create deformers without worrying about the size of our deformers. Let's start off with our front bangs. We're going to use Auto Mesh to quickly make our art mesh for our hair pieces. Now, select our middle piece first and select the Rotation Deformer Creation tool. So when we click and drag our mouse from the top of the hair piece like this, we can create several rotation deformers in a row. We want three deformers like this for this length of hair. Select our part as well as all three rotation deformers and find Skinning in the Modeling menu. Select skinning here, and now you should see three new parts appear under our rotation deformers. What's happened is, Live2D has split our original part into three parts. One per deformer, and if we try to adjust our rotation deformer, you'll notice that it's basically made the swaying for us. Ah, but we need to assign parameters to our deformers so that they'll actually track. Well. We could make them manually, or we could have Live2D do it for us. Make sure to have all three rotation deformers selected, and navigate back to the modeling menu. Select Generate Parameters for Rotation Deformer. It will ask for a parameter name, and since we're rigging our front bangs, let's call this Hair Front Physics. Next, it will ask for the range of angle. This is basically how much it will rotate each rotation deformer per parameter. The default angle of 30 is perfect for our hair. Now, if we scroll down the parameter menu, you'll find a brand new folder with three parameters that create our hair sway. We need to repeat this process with our other front bang pieces. When we're generating the parameters, Live2D should be able to assign keyforms to the hair front physics parameters we made 
as long as you use the same name. So, all of our front bangs should be on the same three parameters. If Live2D tries to make new parameters or puts the keyforms on a different parameter, don't panic. We can either delete this and just add the keyforms manually, or select the parameter here, click change, and then we can move it over to the parameter we want it to be on. Now that we have our front bangs all set up, let's move on to the side bangs. We're going to repeat this exact same process, however, since these are much longer strands of hair, we'll want it to sway a little more than our shorter front strands. Let's use four rotation deformers this time. There's actually no limit to how many you can add, uh, but if you add too many deformers, it can end up stretching the part weirdly or breaking entirely. So, we'll end up with four parameters for sidebang physics left and sidebang physics right. Remember that when rigging, we go by the model's perspective, so left and right feel reversed. Once our side bangs are done, we move on to our back hair. Much like our side bangs, we want to add four rotation deformers for our back hair pieces. For our hair pieces that are separated left and right like this, we need to make sure we're generating separate parameters again, back hair left and back hair right. We also need to generate the parameters separately for our back hair main part, as it covers the entire head. Let's call this back hair main. So, we have all of our hair pieces set up to sway on these parameters, but now we need to actually create the physics. Navigate to the modeling menu, and at the very bottom there's this option called physics settings. Clicking this will bring up the physics setting window. There's going to be a lot of new things here, which I will explain as we set up our first physics on the model. First thing we need to do is create a new physics group. Click add here and this window will pop up. We're actually going to create three separate groups for our hair front, hair side, and hair back. So, let's name this first one hair front. Next, we have the option for an input preset. Let's select head input here, as our hair is attached to our head. And then, we have the physics model preset. This is basically going to be our output, and creates a physics pendulum for us. We'll come back to what a physics pendulum is in just a moment. For now, let's select hair triple pendulum. Now we have created our first physics group. You'll notice that we now have more information on the left here. We have our input settings here. This is what our input preset added for us. But we're actually going to adjust our inputs further. Select body X and click delete to remove this input. We also want to remove body Z. Now we want to add an input, so click add and find our angle y parameter. And this will get it added to our list here. There are two type settings, position x and angle. The effectiveness number here is basically a percentage of how much each input will affect our output parameters. And it's very important to note that effectiveness cannot go over 100 across all inputs of a single type. For example, if I set our angle x input to 100, and then try to increase the effectiveness of our angle y, it's just going to set it back to 0. For this physics group, we want to set our angle x and angle y to 50 effectiveness, and angle z should be set to 100. The final setting here is reflect. This will flip the input parameters effect on our output and we'll actually be using this later on. We can also save our settings to a preset. 
We can either click add under our preset here to create a completely new one, or overwrite save to save over the preset we currently have selected. This is what I generally use for head input, so I'll go ahead and overwrite the old one. With our input all set up, let's go to the output. Click the output settings tab, and then add. We want to select our physics parameters that we created earlier. So, find and check all of our hair front physics parameters. Now, our parameters should appear on this output list here. Technically, our physics are working now. We can click and drag around our model here, and you'll see that our hair is actually reacting a little bit. We can click increase output to automatically increase how expressed our output parameters are otherwise known as scale in this menu. Now, if we try to move this again, it's going to be much more swishy. We do actually want to adjust the scale manually as our hair is moving a little unnaturally like this. We want our first parameter, or the very top part of our hair, to not move too much. So, let's decrease the scale till we're happy with how it's moving. That's our first physics group done. But before we create more, let me quickly explain our pendulum settings down here. You may notice that when we click and drag to test our physics, that the pendulum swings around. This is actually how our physics are working. Since we picked the triple pendulum preset, we have three segments on our pendulum. Generally, we want the amount of pendulum segments to match the amount of output parameters we're using. You can add to the pendulum easily using the add button here. The number of each segment can be set to each output. See how our output parameters are set to 1, 2 and 3 as they descend? This creates our swaying motion as we move the parameters to replicate the pendulum motion. Now we can add more groups for other hair physics. Let's create a new group for hair side left. Use our updated head input, and the same hair triple pendulum output. The inputs are already set up for us, we just need to add our hair side left physics parameters to the output. Don't forget that as we have an extra parameter here, we need to add one more segment to our pendulum. We also need to set our fourth parameter to pendulum number 4. When we do add the new pendulum segment, it will default to these settings. We should just copy over the settings from our third pendulum here, otherwise it may behave weirdly. Increase our output, and adjust the first parameter scale like we did before. And all done! For our hair side right, let's try using the duplicate option here. This will create a complete copy of the current physics group including all of our output parameters and settings. This is super handy when you need to create symmetrical physics groups like this, as all we need to do is change the output parameters here. We can select this drop down menu on each parameter and change it from left to right for each. Usually, live 2 is smart and will pop up with a window which asks if you'd like to switch them all over for the parameters you'd like to select. If that doesn't happen though, you can switch them all over manually, making sure to keep them in the correct order. For this side, we also need to reflect our angle Y input. We want our hair to bounce rather than sway side to side when we look up and down. By reflecting our angle Y input on one side of the hair, we can make it look much more realistic like this. We can repeat the same process with our hair back left and right, and the hair back main to complete all of our physics groups. There's one last thing we need to do for our physics here. On our input menu, you should see this normalization of input section. Both of our input types are shown here, angle and position x, followed by a minimum, default and maximum number. Changing the minimum and maximum here will increase the range of our inputs. 
we won't be changing position X at all. But there's something really neat we can do with the angle settings here. You may have noticed that we only have angle Z set to our angle type input. Angle Z is basically our head tilt. And we will want our hair to follow the direction of the tilt, as if it were being affected by gravity. We can actually set this up in physics right now, rather than rigging it manually later on. Set the minimum for angle to around about minus 30, and the maximum to 30. Make sure to match the minimum and maximum number. If it ends up being different, it can make the pendulum swing weirdly with a bias to one side. Now, let's try our angle Z. Notice how it's staying slightly tilted? You'll also see this in the pendulum. Increasing the normalization of input will make the pendulum sway further. Make sure to go through all of our physics groups and adjust the normalization of inputs to the same numbers. And now, our hair physics are complete. Just look at how our hair sways around. Let's quickly go over what we learnt in this episode. We learnt about the deformer hierarchy, which will become more and more important to keep in mind as we continue to rig. We use skinning to use rotation deformers to create the swaying parameters for our hair pieces. We also introduced the physics window, how to create physics groups to link our physics parameters to specific inputs. I recommend taking some time to familiarise yourself with physics menus, as we'll be using them more later in the series. The next beginner episode will cover our face angles, so our model will finally be able to turn its head in all sorts of directions. Thank you to my Ko-Fi members for supporting the channel, especially our super shiny treasures, Toxan. If you'd like to support the channel, please check out my Ko-Fi link in the description below. Take care and have fun in Live 2D.